I believe we can hear each other, right? We can, yes. Oh, my goodness. You didn't know you were going to have this much fun, huh, uh, before we <laughs> got started. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Things happen. Things happen. All the time, things happen. So I appreciate that uh, you stuck this out with me. Get myself situated. Um, it's evening there where you are in the UK. It is, yep. It's about five thirty, well, six o'clock in the evening. About six o'clock in the evening. Uh, I can get part of you. Uh, can you bring your camera down just a little bit? It's a little too. I, I'm getting more ceiling than. I, oh, there, there you are. My goodness, there you are. Awesomely, awesomely awesome. <laughs> now there are a number of different things that happen in people's life, including what happened to us this morning. More or less, uh, what happened to you? <laughs> uh, we had this uh, major uh, technical glitch. Things often happen, and, and we have. Uh, we have to endure a number of different challenges and situations that take place. Some things happen to us, some things happen for us, and some things happen through us. Uh, there are things that uh, you've experienced that other people may not know, let alone understand. But uh, hopefully uh, today uh, you can speak your mind. I told you I like dogs. See, you freaked <laughs> out. See, you freaked out. And I told you in the pre-show. I love dogs. Any animals on my show is like totally a bonus. So outside of the human, an animal is a bonus. So it's cool. If the dog starts barking, it's really okay. It's really okay. I know you're thinking, be quiet. But the dog's going like, hey, I'm over here. I want some attention too. See, I told you. <laughs> it's okay. Relax. No, All right. So uh, check this out. I got I to gotta, I gotta ask you this question. Uh. You're a mom. I am, yeah. Mm -hmm. And you're you're enjoying life. Yes. You're doing the best you can with the resources and the life that you have. But I got to ask you this question. At what point did you start to notice earlier in your life that things were not going the direction that you needed it to go? I'm not sure I ever realized... It was, it was very early on. I was about 15 or 16. And I began suffering with depression, a lot of anxiety. Um, that, that came from um, years of bullying at school. Um, and it was, it was every day. It was constant. Um, physical violence. Um, just name calling threats um and i was just i was just constantly very very unhappy and i began to notice that my peers around me weren't didn't didn't seem the same as me they didn't they didn't behave the same as i did when you say they didn't behave what do you mean by that um i I guess I, um, the way I tried to get attention was very different from, from my friends, the way I acted out. Okay. So you acted out pretty mm -hmm. much is what you said. So yes. why do you think you were acting out out of curiosity? Now somebody else is probably either doing the same or has experienced the same, but everybody has a different story and a different reason. What do you think contributed to your acting out? I think... I think I was just really unhappy in my own head and yeah. I was trying to, yeah. I was trying to get those emotions, those thoughts, those feelings out mm -hmm. in, in just any way that I could. And yeah. that behavior was, was how I did it. Right. Nobody there, uh, in your circle of life, uh, there was nobody that you felt emotionally safe with to talk it out instead of acting it out. That wasn't there for you. I had I had a very supportive family. Um, I just think when you look back twenty, you know, twenty years ago, mm -hmm. that there wasn't as much known about about mental health, about depression, anxiety as they right. do these days. So what would have looked to my parents, my family, my friends, as you know, teenage angst, I guess, was actually something very different. Yeah. And what you felt different inside, if you tried to describe it, now somebody's going to connect with it when they watch this uh, later, 
or even now. But when you, if you try to describe what you were going through, what you were experiencing inside, what you were feeling, how would you try to describe it so that somebody can get an idea or maybe whoever's going through it may, may see that they can connect with you? How would you describe what you were feeling now, looking back? Just a constant, a constant feeling of, a constant feeling of sickness inside, constant worry. Okay. Every, every time I spoke, every time I, I went out, I was constantly worrying. Have, what have I done? Have I said something? Have I done the wrong thing? Am I going to get into trouble? Um, a feeling that I, I was just constantly, um, just just unhappy. Very very unhappy. Even the even the most joyful things wouldn't make me happy. Yeah, the 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 lack of happiness and the lack of just joy of being alive and enjoying life. Could you pinpoint? Maybe not. But could you pinpoint to something that could have happened or triggered or set in motion you just losing that measure of joy in day-to-day -day living? I think it was just, just from as far back as I can remember from being six or seven years old, okay. constantly being, you know, I, I wear glasses. So that was, that was one thing that children used to pick up on. So it started off as very small, minute things like four eyes. Um, I always had very long, dark hair. So... It was, I was called a witch. Um, but those, those insults, those, those niggly comments used to just build up and build up with, until I was at secondary school. And I guess the amount of trauma that I sustained through those years right. just had a, a constant knock on effect. It was, it was almost like it was building up every time, every comment, every action was, was putting bricks on top of bricks until I could barely see over the top of this wall. So I, I guess it was just trauma on top of trauma that, that contributed to those thoughts and feelings around that age. When you, when you were experiencing uh, feeling literally being treated as if you weren't enough, how did that carry itself over between the ages of 15 and let's say 25? What was your life like if you tried to describe to everyone else, because you mentioned that around the age of 16, 15, 16. So between the ages of 15 and 25, what, what was your life like after experiencing these types of emotions in your teenage years? It was chaotic. I, I began, began heavy, heavy drinking at about 16, between 16 and 18. I was always in and out of the pub with people older than me. Um, I, friends of an appropriate age were drifting away slowly. Um, and those were friendships I tried really, really hard to sustain because those were the only friendships that I'd ever had. So, you know, a, a, couple, of, a couple of girls that I, I'd grown close to, they started to drift away. I became... I became very promiscuous because I thought that was how I was supposed to gain, how I was supposed to get attention. Right. And, and it felt good. Um, so I was, I was engaging in some really, really risky behavior. Mm -hmm. When it got to the age of 18, I decided <laughs> I couldn't take any more of, of this life. And I decided I was going to move away to Leeds um, and just almost reinvent myself because hmm. who I was wasn't working. It had never worked for me. So I needed to, I needed to change that. And in my head, that was the, that was the right idea. That was so the you, right thing to do. That was the right thing to do is to get away from where you were because that wasn't working. Yep. Now you, you move away, you go to Leeds. Nobody relatively knows you, right? Is that pretty much how it was? <laughs> Yep, so it was 250 miles away from where I, where I was uh, living. So I knew nobody. So like, yeah, you didn't know a fresh start, huh? Yep. <laughs> fresh start? <laughs> how'd, that, how'd, that, how'd that turn out? Badly. I, um, <laughs> I was, I was I get, already... I can see that on your face. <laughs> oh, by the way, if everybody's watching this, I don't know the whole story. So don't think that we've got, this is all planned. Trust me, this is, this is all live and spontaneous. 
So, so you, it, it turned out badly. Go ahead. Give it us an idea of what you mean. What do you mean so, by badly? I was already extremely vulnerable um, because of the bullying, because of the, uh, you know, the, the risky behavior that I was partaking in. I, um, I almost didn't understand boundaries. So I got a job in a hotel and almost immediately the, the manager must have picked up on that and started acting really inappropriate with me. Um, so that obviously that job didn't last for long. Yeah. And then I found myself homeless. So mm. at just before my 19th birthday, oh. I, I was, I was homeless. I had a bag of clothes and I, um, I managed to find myself a bed and breakfast to, to just for a couple of nights. Um, mm. unfortunately in that bed and breakfast were, were the types of people that, that no young girl should be associating with. They were, um, drug addicts. So mm. mostly crack cocaine and heroin. Wow. Um, but suddenly I'd found a group of people that, that liked me, that enjoyed being around me, apparently. Um, and, and yeah, it, it worked, it, it sort of, I was smoking weed with them and just not really doing anything else. So I, um, yeah, rather than looking for another job, looking for stable accommodation, I was just smoking weed all day. You pretty much found yourself going from one situation into another situation that wasn't going in the direction that you thought it would. Did you ever think about going back? Um, I couldn't. In my head, I couldn't. I had left i moved away um i couldn't go back a complete failure oh i see what you're saying right I, going, I going back okay yeah, couldn't do that now the people that mm -hmm. you were you were hanging out with at that time they weren't a good association but you were hanging out with them yeah did did you ever think of separating from them that wasn't possible i i did i did believe it or not i did um, a guy that I'd met in the hotel that I was working at before that I um, I got in contact with him and um, he was like yeah no come come and live in the next town over with me um, mm -hmm. I, I've got somewhere to, to live can you still hear me because that kind of lost you for a second there. Because I can't hear you. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Because I can't hear you. For some reason. I don't know why. Da, 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 da. Are you on a wireless? No. Uh-oh. Da-da-da-da. So everybody, if everybody can hear us, can everybody hear us, by the way? Maybe you can let us know on the screen if you can still hear us or you can hear both of us. You can hear me, though, right? Da, 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 da. All right. I'm testing my monitors here. For some reason, I don't know what just happened, but something just happened. Yeah, there is no sound. They're telling us on the screen that there's no sound. So do me a huge favor. Uh, everybody, what we're going to do is, uh, yeah, they can't hear you for some reason or another. So what we're going to do, Victoria, are you on a wireless by any chance? Do you have headphones? You have headphones nearby? No? There we go. Okay. So what we do, uh, what I do with all my guests, is anytime there's a technical difficulty on their end, they just go ahead and disconnect, and then they'll rejoin. Um, everybody, just so you know, uh, we have this show this morning with Victoria, and Victoria is sharing uh, her story because she has uh, something she wanted to say. 
uh, on our public service channel here. And uh, we also have a show on my other public service channel, which is Narcabuse underscore TV. And Narcabuse underscore TV, we're going to have a show at 12 p.m. California time. Uh, not that everybody in the U.K. is going to still be awake to want to watch that, but uh, feel free to join. Uh, she just mentioned typing on the screen there. Uh, she just disconnected. Hopefully she's going to reconnect there, and then we'll keep going. Uh, everybody be patient uh, with us on that, and uh, she can hopefully uh, connect. We'll give it a moment or two. If uh, by any chance you yourself, and the, the uh, technical difficulties don't scare you away, uh, if by any chance you yourself would like to tell your story and, and be a part of this public service channel, uh, feel free to uh, contact me, send me a private message, and we can go from there. And uh, we can have you on as well on any one of my platforms, um, Open Session Podcast, which we're on right now, as well as Dark Abuse TV. Let's see if we can get her in here. Can you hear us comfortably now? I can, yes. Sorry about that. I, I can hear you too. Sometimes it happens if you're getting a call or if it tells you the battery's dead or something can happen, uh, it'll, it'll, it'll cut the volume off. You were talking about having an opportunity to change your life or at least go live somewhere else. Go live somewhere I, else. Yes. So I went, I went um, and moved into the next town over to, um, with this guy. And suddenly I realized that this wasn't all it was cracked up to be. Um, it was a dingy, horrible bed set and I was oh, wow. living with a guy that basically I was a young girl he was he was in his 30s and I was expected to do certain things for for somewhere to stay wow so that that was not what you had in mind and you thought it was going to be better it's amazing how in just a short time so many different things happen how long did you how long did you stay? By the way, everybody's happy. They can hear you now. They can hear you now. So everybody <laughs> Janelle's happy. All right, go ahead. So so uh so you were you were saying so now you get in yes. this situation and it's not it's not getting better. It's not getting better. No, what no, else getting, what else happened? Getting worse. Well I managed to find myself a job in a local pub. So so it wasn't so bad. I had my own money. Um and then I a few a few weeks went by and and I just couldn't stand the situation in the bedsit anymore and I had run into yet another guy who was like you can come and stay at mine I've got a spare right. bedroom this time okay so he's got a spare bedroom so this is like a step better than what I was where I was oh wait um, so you didn't have your own bedroom when you were at the other place no, oh okay no, yeah that wasn't no. that's not cool that's not cool no, all right no. so you get to this new one and he has a bedroom. Go ahead. You were saying, go ahead. He has, he has a bedroom that I can stay in. Um, and, and that was, that was, that was okay. That was good. Um, I, I suddenly kind of made friends with all, all his friends. Um, I was back smoking weed again. Um, and it was, it was fun. You know, I wasn't expected to do anything for a roof over my head. Um, smoking weed, well, that wasn't too bad. I was still going to work. I was, you know, holding down a job. That was great. And then I met one of his female friends where she she was just like a breath of fresh air. She was so, so confident, so carefree. There was there was nothing that that she, you know, she was afraid of. And I almost looked up to her. Um, little did I know that she was a a heroin addict and a crack addict. Really? Wow. Wow. Yeah. Um, now, you know, I, I came from a, a sleepy little village. I didn't, um, I'd never come across people that, that used substances before, at least not to my knowledge. So, you know, so I would never know what to look out for. Mm -hmm. I, so there was no warning signs for me. Um, and one day she just, she, she said to me, you know, come, come out with me. I want you to, um, I want you to come and do something for me. So 
I was like, okay, you know, this this person I was looking up to, this person that I was almost aspiring to be, you know, I had no confidence. And and she had bags of it, so why wouldn't I want to be her? So one night we went out and this was we went into the town centre. Now in the UK, Bradford has one of the country's most notorious red light districts. Um, it's been featured on many, many a film, many a documentary. And that's where she took me. And mm. she, I didn't realise until, until I got to where she told me to stand. She's like, right, I want you to stand here. And when I get into a car, I want you to take down its reg plate. So I was like, okay, kind of synced into what, what she was going to do and what I was expected to to do for her right. basically watch mm -hmm. watch out for her make sure she was you know as safe as she possibly could be and and then the car pulled up and she she there was conversations at the window and I could see this guy pointing towards me and basically he he wanted me he didn't want her and she kind mm -hmm. of looked around at me I can remember that that moment vividly she she looked at me and she shushed me towards her and i just got myself into a situation where i got in the back of the car with her mm. um and then i think the dread started to sink in i realized exactly what i'd got myself into i just got into a a car on a red light district mm -hmm. and yeah, I was I was being taken back to a house where I was going to be expected to do certain things for money. Did you did you at any point think to yourself that this could be something you could do long term or was it something that you thought maybe this is just happening and I'm never doing this again? I don't think there was there was any of that thought process. I think I was so no in thought. the moment. I, I'd just been asked yeah. by this girl who I who I looked up to. It's almost like if if your mother or your mm -hmm. your father asks you to do mm -hmm. to do something, you you kind of just instinctively do it. And I think mm -hmm. because I was so so broken and so traumatized by all the experiences I'd had up until that point, I had this one mm -hmm. person that was almost looking after me, my protector. Mm -hmm. And. You know, I'm not saying that she made me do it at all because it was all, you know, my own choice. But, um, yeah, that's... I didn't see anything further than that, that, that what was right in front of me. How long did it, did it last that you were part of that lifestyle? I... That, that went on for... For... Um, for about f five years. I and within passed... that within that five year time frame, at what point did you have your daughter come along? Well, bef before that, I after after that evening, we mm -hmm. she we stopped on the way home, and we'd made a significant amount of money between us. And she mm -hmm. stopped and and bought heroin and crack cocaine. Oh wow! After after got, after you got after we got out that, of, got yeah. out of the car from the guy. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. So we went home, and she started putting putting this substance onto onto um, paraphernalia, and she offered me some. Now I'd been smoking weed with her. I was fine. Nothing bad had happened. Um, so again, I did it. Mm -hmm. um, so you go ahead. And, then, and so you, you, you went ahead and joined her when she was doing her, was it crack and heroin? Yeah. yeah I, so I tried crack and heroin for the first time. That your first time. Night. Your first time. Yeah. That, that, that whole night sticks with you then. No doubt. It does. Yeah, completely. So that night, it was the first night I'd ever tried crack cocaine and heroin. And, and then that, that became a part. That... Go ahead. Said, yes. You were saying? 
yeah and it, it just that was something that 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 went on then throughout the next the next five years of my life i'd got a heroin addiction very quickly yeah um i i found that i couldn't hold down a job so i lost my job mm. i then became street wow. homeless actually mm. physically street homeless at the wow. age of 20 21 um i yeah i i was um around 2003 2004 which i'll have been about mm. 22 i wow. was subjected to a horrific serious sexual assault from a client on the street um yeah so it was really it was it was really really bad when you're when you're around 22 or so when you had this assault that took place the sexual assault took place on you in the lifestyle that well you had no job at the time that this took place this is what no, this is the life this is working. the life that you were living yeah this is right this yeah. is the life that you you were you were actually living um when did it start to to get better i i fell pregnant in 2007 with my so my daughter my four, four years after the assault mm -hmm. you got you got pregnant um yes. and when you when you got pregnant did it did it shake you did it did it make you think okay i got to do something different did you go back home? What happened? It gave me it. When I found out initially, I, I didn't really, it was quite a shock. But within the first three months, I, I made a decision to, I was going to, I was going to get clean. I was going to stop using. Now I tried many a detoxes before I tried rapid detoxes. I tried methadone wow. maintenance. Wow. Um, I, I've never, nothing ever kept me clean. Now, Not, nothing ever, months, never, nothing ever worked before. Three months no. now into your preg pregnancy, you said, I'm going to do this. Yep. Mm -hmm. Good for you. I'm Good for you. I'm going to do this. I got myself on a methadone maintenance prescription. Um, I, I got therapy in place. Uh, wow. I, I built myself up at, a, a a large professional support structure um and and i i remained clean throughout my pregnancy um and then thereafter i've been clean 15 years this month time out time <laughs> out no time out time out <laughs> i had to do that <laughs> i just had to okay. do that so way to go idaho so that's a i'm sorry american <laughs> expression uh so that's cool that's totally awesomely cool but now three months into your pregnancy that's a big step because you decided i'm dropping this lifestyle and i'm choosing i'm making my own and i'm going to get a support system now you said a professional support system that's a that's a really cool way to say it uh when you went to therapy what are some tools and tips that you were able to get from therapy that uh, helped you along the way so i first had to understand that that you need to completely cut everybody out of your life that that is involved in that lifestyle you can't hang on to people you you know you need to totally take yourself out of it um i i i guess i completely I was saying, I, I say that I cleanse my environment, you know, my, oh, my okay. home, I, I needed to have no reminders because I needed to have no triggers around me, mm -hmm. you know, just, just certain things that, that you think would just anything, anything from that past, that past behavior, I had to get rid of and completely remove from my, from my existence. What was it? Was it very hard to do that? Or was it becoming easy because of the pregnancy and your and your child on the way? I, I definitely had. It was definitely a drive, you know, a driving factor. 
there was, you know, I had this person that was, I always say that was, that was more important than me. You know, it was, I had absolutely nothing in my life. I, I had less than nothing. And, wow. and yet I had this, you know, I, I, I told my family, I, I, I didn't really have any friends, but I told my family and, and almost all of a sudden I, I had something that I could, I could build on and I could make a success of. I could be a successful mother, you know, even if that was just keeping that child safe throughout my pregnancy. Um, you know, I used to enjoy going to the doctor and giving a clean urine screens because <laughs> that was how I measured my success. Uh, way, to, way to go. <laughs> okay. I like that. That is... That's pretty good. You're like, I can't wait to go get my urine screen. I'm, I'm good. I'm good. Wait, no, wait. I got to do it again. I got to do it again. <laughs> I got toys here. That is really cool. Okay, so I'm going to do something here. Just bear with me. Um, your buddy here, can you see the screen there? I can, yes. She says, where do you think your life would have gone if you didn't get pregnant? I'd be dead. I'd oh. be dead. I had, when I, when I fell pregnant, I had, I just recovered from two deep vein thrombosis, so the blood clots mm. in my leg from injecting. Now, I, I went into hospital one night and he said to me, if you don't stop using, I'm going to see you in three months time and I'm going to be removing one of your legs. He wow. goes, right now it could be either. So, you know, potentially I could have lost both my legs and I knew people that had happened to. So without a question of a doubt, if it hadn't been for my daughter coming along, I would be, I would be dead. You I, have, there's no other way. You have, had the unexpected happen in your life to make your life better. Mm -hmm. The unexpected that you didn't plan or purpose to happen has put you on a totally different path of life. Now, not everybody gets to go through that and end up having a child. Other things happen to them along the way. But what would you tell, what would you tell your younger self when this all started, the bullying and the, and the teasing, the different emotional type of traumas that came your way when you were a teenager, what would you tell your younger self based upon what you know right now? Talk to people. Tell people exactly how bad it is. You know, if I'm, I'm so vigilant with, with my children... <laughs> And, you know, and things that come home from school and, and kind of emotions that I can see on their face. I always ask them questions to, to just to try and see, you know, what's going on, what's going on in your life. And it's not that my parents didn't do that. I think it's just that I was very, very good at hiding my situation. Mm. And I, I had support in school, but it wasn't... I think, I think they need to have proper mental health professionals working in schools and not just, not just support staff. Because I think if someone's trained to ask those questions, you can, you can pull that information out of people. Mm -hmm. So I think talk, talk to people. That is what I would say, talk to people because you're not going to get judged. Everybody has these thoughts and feelings. Mm -hmm. You know, childhood and being an adolescent is such a traumatic time without all of these, you know, without bullying, without mental health, it, it just is. So if you feel that you're an in an environment, a safe environment where you can talk to somebody, that's going to, that's going to help you. you, do, find do, you trusted you, adult. do you find yourself now? that you've experienced these things and so much more that we're not going to talk about. But if everybody wants to talk to you or reach you, what's your, what's your Instagram page? At escaping my past. <laughs> <sighs> that 
that was kind of that was kind of slow. I don't know. Okay, so if anybody <laughs> wants to talk to you and reach you and uh, connect with you, you know, it would be good. You know, what is your Instagram page? Escaping my past. <laughs> oh baby, yeah, she's catching on, man. It's all I right. Get it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm like, it's your page. How could you possibly get it wrong? <laughs> like, I have two. Oh, oh, now you're gonna brag. Look at you, just uh, trying it's to throw it. I got two. I got two. That's how we roll in the UK. So I'm sorry. Sorry. So I'm just curious that I'm curious to ask this question now. Oh, wait, I'm not going to ask anything. Wait, I'm just going to double check here. Did we get everybody's question? Oh, no, we got another one here. Okay. I mean, I like you guys putting them in the question section, man. I like that. Uh, does your daughter know how much she saved you? My daughter does know every year we, we celebrate we, I, I tell her, I constantly tell her that she saved my life. She is my lifesaver. She really, really is. And every, every year we celebrate, it's not just my clean day, but it's, oh. it's the day that she saved mommy. Oh, you know, man. She, and she did something I could never do. And I'm, she, you know, this wasn't something that she consciously did because she was a, ba a newborn baby, but she she did a, she 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 did a detox off of methadone i couldn't do that i could my wow. body wouldn't allow me to do that she did wow she's she's is... incredible and i always say she is she is the strongest person honestly she is the strongest person that i that i know and i know a lot of people she is so driven and so wonderful that I, I just I think that's where her strength started. She had one of the most traumatic starts in the world, but but she kind of survived it and she went on and she's grown into the most beautiful, you know, fourteen year old girl that there ever was. <laughs> so yeah, uh, I don't know. You know, there's probably you know you're the original. You're the original. You're the first one <laughs> on the on. You're the first template. So. You probably were the same also. So the way that you talk about your daughter right now and the way your face changes, it becomes this entire glowing bubble of happiness. You just like this one gigantic happy bubble. It's very beautiful when you're talking about your daughter. Have you ever felt someone talking about you the same way when you were younger with so much pride? Not, not that I can remember, or just not that I could recognise. And I'm sure my mum did. I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure she did. But I just, I wasn't able to, I wasn't able to see that. So, so you have a, you have a huge responsibility to talk about yourself that way, the same way you talk about your daughter, because <laughs> you save, you saved her life by making that decision. You're a team, you and her, it's obvious that you both have the yeah. similar, you have similar hearts. You have very similar hearts, no doubt. The way you talk about her is what I saw when I saw your page, and then I invited you to come join me and share your story and tell your, tell your story. You also are that same type of person that you just described. Matter of fact, I ask you this, name two things about your daughter that you admire about her two and just one word each two things that you admire about your daughter one word each positive of course that you admire about your daughter what two things can you think of right now that you admire about your daughter her strength and determination wow i wonder where she got that from <laughs> hello people you are a woman of strength. You are a woman of determination. Even when you had no family and friends nearby, you're sitting here today, a mother of a beautiful daughter, but she's only a reflection of the beauty you were before you had these things cross your path. Our choices and our decisions are quite inter interesting, aren't they? Uh, they lead us in many different directions because sometimes, we make them based upon, you know, in the moment. We make them in the moment, right? Day, yeah. And now you have someone that you're, 
you have been taken care of for 14 years and the rest of your life, you're going to always be, you know, looking over uh, her shoulder as it were, <laughs> just yeah. keeping an eye, right? No, I mean, Hey, I'm a parent. So I'm, we're parents. That's what we're going to do, but we're still going to try to give them their freedom. Yeah. But there's a measure of pride when you speak about her. That's, that I guarantee you, your friends want you to also apply to yourself. Because look at the screen. Look at what your friends are writing to you on the screen. It says, do you know now how proud your friends and family are of you? You, girlfriend. Uh, hold on a second. Hold on a second. <laughs> there are choices in your life that you've made that you want to push the button and get a do-over. <laughs> it ain't going to happen. <laughs> it's already done. It's done. It's done. We all want to be able to push a big button and go, okay, do-over. Can I just, you know, get out of jail free card? Uh, things happen. And because of that, there's a measure of pride that's happening on the screen right now for you from your friends. So no matter how many technical glitches we had at the beginning, <laughs> we were going to do this show. And I'm glad we did because there are people that love you because you're a lovable person who has strength and determination. Now, I really would love to talk to you longer and longer, but because we had such a late start and that's all my fault for whatever was happening over here technically, um, uh, we're going to have to call the show to quits, but I are some, there are some things that I want to run by you before I end the show, a semi-game that I want to play with you. And uh, this show is not meant for you, everybody to hear every nuance of your story, but to get some measure of an idea of what happened to you. So we're going to do something here. I'm going to ask you a series of questions, and you could say whatever's on your mind. Of course, as you know, I stay away from religion, politics, and racism. Uh, for this particular platform. Uh, uh, so um, I hope you're ready because you got to trust me. Are you ready? <laughs> you told me about this. Okay, I trust you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So it's going to be really simple because remember, everything for all my guests, it's always based on you. I'm not going to ask you like how far is the earth from the moon or something, something crazy like that. I'm not going to ask you something strange. So are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. All right. Here we go. Now, abuse isn't easy to see. Would you agree? Yes. You no, better I agree. agree. It's a, you no, better agree. It's, agree. A post on, it's a post on your page. You have to think about it. You're go, Let me see if I agree with that, Captain. I, like, I don't know. Let me, I've never, I've never, oh yes, I do, I remember that, that was, that was something I wrote. <laughs> you wrote that, woman? What's, what do you know what you want? Okay, I, I like you, Victoria. I was listening your word, I like you, <laughs> Okay, so everybody, I just want you to know, before we got started, I asked her if she was nervous. Obviously, she is, and she's lost her mind, because she doesn't remember what's on her own stinking page. Okay, abuse isn't easy to see. It's something that can wrap itself around us and it can literally smother us. You're being abused or emotionally uh, abused, traumatized, as you, as you have described it, when you were younger is something that was challenging as a teen to deal with. What are you planning to do to make sure your daughter doesn't fall down that same rabbit hole. We have a really, really open, we have, you know, conversation constantly about how she's feeling, what's going on. You know, I'm, I'm probably slightly overbearing as a parent, but I want to know, I want to know if she's having difficulty, if it's, you know, boys, if it's friends, well, okay, let's talk about it. Let's, let's find out if one of your friends said this to you, actually, let's break it down. What does this really mean? You know, does this, is this really as bad as, as how it seems when that's, that's thrown at you? Right. It's just having it, that open dialogue constantly. Is that a challenge? Do you find it challenging to keep that going? 
not when you not when you have you know I've, I've, I've got skills when it comes to open questions <laughs> so. way to go girl got <laughs> skills yeah I, i'll get her to talk yeah. <laughs> you said you said i'll get her to open up <laughs> i'll get her yeah. to open up all right okay now i have another one for you second one the best revenge is when you escape the abuse and make a success of the rest of your life. I said that one too. Hmm. I remember that. I think you should remember that. You posted that. What were you thinking? What were you thinking about that motivated you to put that all across social media? It's, you know, no, nobody wants to see you make a success of, you know, I, I'll be speaking a lot more on my page about it, but during the time my 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 daughter's biological father i had to flee domestic violence from him and and there was so much coercive control um and just general domestic abuse that he never wanted me to to excel at anything um and my recovery was one of those things because if i recovered if i spread my wings and went out into the world mm -hmm. then I would leave him yeah, and, right. and I guess, you know, my posts come from, you know, fleeting thoughts and memories and, and that's what, that's what it was, you know, actually if I'd have stayed in that relationship, I, I would have constantly been held on the brink of kind of recovery and relapse because of, you know, the, the energy in the house and, and his behavior. When you, when you look at a situation like that, you know you've gone through it. You had to make choices and decisions along the way, and you're here today. One, two, three tips that you could pass on to someone who's in the same position, what would you tell them that could be of a help to them if you were able to pass on some tips to them? And they're trapped in a domestic abuse drug addiction situation talk therapy therapy is is your way you know that therapist doesn't even have to say anything to you quite often it's just you talking that that you find the answers that you're looking for therapy was a massive massive you know something that really worked for me um and and People, people will always, <sighs> it's really difficult. The, the, the one time that it's, it's having people that you get on with so that you gel with. So those professionals that will be there will be the ones that actually support you. You know, if you don't think something's working for you, change, ask for somebody else because it wasn't until I'd gone through probably 10 recovery workers and that's how difficult wow. I had to get on with. 10. Wow. That I found one that I really got on with that I felt listened to me. And that's where my, you know, my real recovery started. So, you know, find that person that you gel with because that, you know, that is where you're gonna, you know, start to kind of lay those foundations. Therapy, different types of therapy. Hell, if you want to go and have psychology, you want to go and have CBT, do it all because they'll all, you know, the psychology will, will help with past trauma. And, and a lot of the time, if there's addiction, domestic abuse, there's, it's always past trauma. You know, there's, there's something that's gone on that's triggered that event in your life. So deal with, deal with what's going on within yourself with different types of therapy. Um, set yourself goals. You know, if you're in that place, if you're contemplating recovery in with in whichever sense it is set yourself goals now i'm a massive list writer i've i've you know i've literally got my list in front of me here <laughs> yay <laughs> I write go lists. ahead i really do go ahead write your list you know okay this is what i need to do so i'm contemplating recovery to be able to move on to the next you know the next stage of the cycle what do i need to do write it down you know, as, you, as you're going through it, tick it off. Everyone loves to see a line or a tick next to your, next to your to-do list. Do that because you're building on something. You're growing that list. You really are. And 
you know, if, if, if you're lucky enough to have those friends and family there in the background, if, if you're in a place where you want to try and change your life, they will most probably listen to you. You know, reconnect with old friends because the ones that you've got probably, you know, especially with addiction, no the ones that you've got yeah. are no good. How, how close you think you are and how much they, you know, they, they are there for you. They're not there for the right reasons. You need to move away from that. Uh, I'm not sure if that's my fault. I talk a lot, so... <laughs> I know. See, you're over your nervousness now. So this is this is kind of like you know, here comes Vi here comes Victoria. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so go. No, you're doing no. You're doing great. Hey, there, listen. Uh, hey, nobody comes to watch this thing for me. <laughs> I, I just, I, I just, I just oh, face. Um, uh, I think you have made some very strong tips that people can utilize uh, to make their life go in the right direction, and you're you're very exemplary. Of doing that but more importantly you're exemplary to your daughter because you're there for her you're trying to be there for her you're not trying to be perfect that can happen sometimes we can start to feel that we need to be but especially as a parent we just need to be present we need to be available we need to be approachable and uh, those are the things that you're providing for her the ability to let her know on a regular basis that I'm right here and I'm approachable May not have all the answers, but I at least can cry with you and we can hug it out and we can try to tackle it together. Uh, you're giving her what you didn't get that you emotionally needed. We all are different emotionally with our energy. So what one child needs, another one doesn't. What you may have needed at a young age, maybe somebody else got one thing. It's not all cookie cutter. You needed something different. And now you're able to give it to yourself. And you're able to give it to your daughter. Um, I want to spend more time with you again, but that is going to be totally up to you because, again, technical difficulties, things happen. We started super late. So that means a lot of stuff that I have sitting over here that I did not get to talk to you about. I want to be able to do again because now the nervous bug is gone. See, now it's gone. Look, at, I'm looking at you now. <laughs> this is kind of the way you were in the pre-show. You were chilling, see? So now... You're ready to go, but we're going to have to end the show, unfortunately, sad to say. Uh, but hopefully you will allow me, please, uh, to come back again. Uh, we'll do something uh, again in which uh, uh, I'll be able to tackle some other things that I wanted to and spend more time with you. Uh, I enjoy listening to you. You, you, have, uh, you have an amazing uh, life that you have led up to this point. But I want to talk more about what you're going to do in the future uh as queen blogger so uh so <laughs> i just gave you that name i just made that name That's up good. for you I'll take that. <laughs> so, so, so you're the queen blogger you should you should just go ahead and do that now you should just you know and every time every time you write a blog you should have a noise the b noise uh the sound of a b <laughs> and then all of a sudden i don't know i'm making up stuff but uh i i enjoyed being with you uh it was an honor to hear the little bit that we talked about today but again, I said, I've got a chunk of stuff that was prepared for you that we didn't get to uh, because I have another show uh, within the next hour. Uh, but thank you so much. You're an awesome guest. Uh, you should be on everybody's podcast. You should. Everybody should have you on to tell your story. And my goodness, where's the book, woman? Where, where, what you doing here to me? Where? I'm writing the book. I'm writing the book. Oh. It's, it's coming. It's uh, coming. Hey. <laughs> You, what are you doing, writing a, a letter a day? What are you <laughs> chop, chop, let's go, let's go, let's go. I want to be able to buy that thing. Let's go, let's go. All right, anyhow, so thank you so much, Victoria. You're a true pleasure, and uh, you are going to raise a daughter that's going to going to be there for you the rest of your life. Just hang in there those teenage years. You, you know, it I'm can sorry. be, it can, yeah, yeah, you know, they just kind of make you think they don't like you, but they really do. Yeah. Uh, so they just, it's just hard for them to express it, you know, so just hang in there. Uh, you're, you're, you're no doubt doing a, a fantastic job. And today you were <laughs> fantastic. You were nervous okay. though. You were nervous. I guess, <laughs> you were nervous, <laughs> but you did good. You know, you started, you started warming up after a while. So note to anyone that comes on my show, I love it when you start off nervous and then end up being like she is right now. She's like chilling right now. <laughs> 
flipping, <laughs> flipping her hair back. She just chilling. She like that, da 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 da. All right, all right. Thank you very much. You did an excellent job, uh, and I will talk to you soon. Everybody, thank you for all your support. I'm out of here. You enjoy the rest of your evening, Victoria. Take care. Bye bye. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Thank you, everybody. Bye bye.